Do you know composite beams can result in significant saving in material cost? Do you know composite construction results in efficient and economic structural design? Composite construction can reduce the depth of steel beams. In this tutorial, you will learn design of steel concrete composite beams with trapezoidal profile sheeting as per Euro Code 4. This is part 22 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at link down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, my name is Dr. Javed Qureshi. I'm a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this tutorial, I will solve a practical example related to steel concrete composite beam in secondary beam applications where profile sheeting is oriented perpendicular to the axis of the beam. And remember, we are using Eurocode 4 to design this beam. The learning outcomes of this tutorial are that by the end of this tutorial, you will have all the information to be able to design a steel concrete composite beam as per Eurocode 4. I have taken this example from Steel Construction Institute Guide B387. And this is the example that we will be solving today. This is the secondary beam that we are going to design today. It is a six meter long composite beam. It has UDL at three meters center. This is the beam that we will design today. The slab is 130 mm deep with one millimeter thick foam floor 60 profile sheeting from Tata Steel and it is running perpendicular to the steel beam. The design checks include moment resistance of the composite beam, number of shear studs, vertical shear, and transfer reinforcement. We have to consider this secondary beam on grid 2, 3, and on CD on a typical flow. The span of the beam here is 6 meters, and the span of sheeting is 3 meters. The data given for this problem is the diameter of a stud is 19 millimeter, the height of a stud before welding is 100 millimeter. After welding, it comes out to be 95 millimeter. Beam span is six meters. Beam spacing, which is the span of profile sheeting, is three meters. The total depth of slab is 130 millimeters. Depth of deck above sheeting profile, HSC, is 70 millimeters. Depth of profile or height of profile is 60 millimeters. Width of the bottom trough is 120, which is here. And the top trough is 170, which is this distance. Materials are steel grade S275, for which yield stress is 275, and ultimate stress is 2110 Newton per millimeter square. Steel reinforcement FYK is 500 Newton per millimeter square. Concrete here is C2530, where 25 is cylindrical strength and 30 is cube strength. The density assumed here is 26 for wet concrete and 25 for dry concrete. The cylindrical strength FCK is 25. Secant modulus or Young's modulus is 31 kN per millimeter square. First, we have to work out concrete weight and we will work out concrete weight in wet situation when concrete is wet and in dry situation when concrete has hardened. For 130 millimeter slab, the concrete volume given is 0 0.098, but in the problem, it is used as 0 0.097. The weight of concrete here is given as well, but this is based on density as 25 kilonewton per meter cube wet situation and dry density is 24 kilonewton per meter cube. But remember that this is given in manufacturer's data book, but in our example, the wet density is 26 and dry density is 25. So using these, we get the load of wet concrete and load from dry concrete. And then we have construction stage actions or loads. At construction stage, we need to take into account self weight of the deck, which is 0.11. And we obtained this from manufacturer's section properties for one millimeter thick steel deck. The profile sheeting weight is 0.11. For steel beam, we have assumed the self weight as 0.2 kN per meter square. When we add this up, we get 0.31 kN per meter square. 
as permanent action. Variable actions at construction stage should be the weight of wet concrete and equipment and any other construction loading. So here construction loading is 0.75 kN per meter square. The self weight of wet concrete that we found out a little earlier is 0.25. If we add it up, we get 3.27 as variable action. Composite stage when concrete has hardened, now we will take the dry weight of concrete, which is 2.3. And then steel deck, steel beam, and ceiling and services as well, they are counted as permanent actions. And variable action, which is the flow load, and that is occupancy load is given. This is 3.3 kilonewton per meter square. For typical offices, we have variable action as 3 kilonewton per meter square. What design checks need to be carried out for composite beams with transverse profile sheeting? Remember that this is a beam. For beam, mainly we need three design checks. And these three design checks are bending, shear, and serviceability or deflections. Here, I will not check vertical shear and I will not focus on serviceability. I will simply focus on bending. In a secondary beam, normally we work out bending in a very simple way, which is bending moment is equal to plastic section modulus times the material strength. But here, because the beam is composite, it means that it will have certain degree of shear connection with profile sheeting. And that will not be full shear connection because we will not be utilizing the complete shear connection. So that's the reason we need to check that the beam performs well at construction stage when we are constructing the beam and it performs well at composite stage when concrete has hardened and full composite action can be utilized. So these are the design checks that I will be performing. First, we have to choose the profile sheeting, which is based on load span tables. Then we need to work out design loads at construction and composite stage, and then construction stage member checks to ensure that beam performs well while we are constructing it. And it does not fail when we are constructing steel concrete composite beam. The main focus will be on composite stage member checks which will involve mainly three checks, but I will carry out this fourth check as well. First, we need to work out plastic resistance at full shear connection. Then we will work out the shear connector resistance and degree of shear connection. Now, this is really very important. We need to know degree of shear connection in order to work out this plastic shear resistance with partial shear connection. We need to check how much shear connection is developing in this beam. And then we will work out longitudinal shear. This is to ensure that the shear from shear connection between concrete, steel decking, and composite beam is transferred to the supports. In this, we will be mainly checking two things. We will be checking ties and we will be checking the struts. And I will explain in a minute what does it mean by these concepts. And these are already explained as well in lecture. A link is down below for lecture. First step is to choose the profile sheeting. Here, profile sheeting is already given to us, which is 60 millimeter form floor 60 profile sheeting from Tata Steel. But if it is not given to you, then what you do, you simply go to manufacturer's load span tables, and then you choose a profile sheeting based on service loads and based on the span of profile sheeting, based on span of the composite slab. So if the span of composite slab is, which is spacing between two composite beams, if it is three, then you choose 60 millimeter deep profile sheeting. If it is say five, then you choose this 146 millimeter deep profile sheeting. If it is more than six, then you use this asymmetrical slim floor beams, 225 mm deep, which are constructed as part of the beam. The next step is to work out design loads and for which I will be using equation 6.10b where we multiply this C factor, which is 0.925. Let us work out construction stage loading. Distributed load is equal to 0.925, which is C factor. 1.35 is gamma G and GK 
at construction estate we worked out little earlier 0.31 1.5 is gamma q and 3.27 is qk which we worked out little earlier it gives us loading of 5.29 kN per meter square but this is distributed on the flow we need to multiply it with the floor area so floor area in our case is 6 meters which is the span of the secondary beam and 3 meters which is bay width which means that the beam is taking loading 1.5 meter from one side and 1.5 meter from the other side and and this is the internal beam. If the beam was edge beam, then simply it will take loading from one side, which will be 1.5 meter. In that case, we get 95.2 kN. And then we work out composite stage loading. First distributed load using the same logic 2.89 we worked out earlier. 3.3 was occupancy load, which we worked out earlier. It gives us 8.56 kN per meter square. Again, we multiply it with the span of the beam and the bay width. Bay width in our case is three meters. Let us now work out design values of moment and shear at ultimate limit state. First, construction stage. In construction stage, we need to check two things. One is sheeting should be able to take wet concrete, any other construction loading, be it from equipment, be it from labor. So 95.2, which is the design load times length of the beam, divided by 8, it gives us 71.4 kN. Remember that this is the loading on the beam. We need to check profile sheeting as well, which we will work out a little later. Then composite stage or normal stage moments. Here the maximum moment will be again, I'm assuming that the beam is a simply supported beam here. So which means that FD L over 8 or WL square over 8 because here we have multiplied length already. So that's why it is FDL divided by 2. This load is in kilonewton. So that's why we're just multiplying 1L. And this gives us 114.8 kilonewton meter. Then we need to work out design shear force at the ends because this is UDL. So it will be WL over 2. But here L is already multiplied. So it will be total load divided by 2, we get 76.5. We will use this shear loading when we are checking vertical shear. These are partial factors for resistance, structural steel, gamma M0 is 1, gamma C is 1.5, gamma S is 1.15 for shear connectors, gamma V is 1.25, and longitudinal shear, it's 1.25 as well. Step 3 is construction stage design checks. Here we are checking two things. First, the bare steel deck profile, it should be able to take wet concrete equipment and any personnel. The applied bending moments should be less than the moment capacity. Let us first of all work out if steel profile deck can support wet concrete equipment and personnel or not. Permanent actions will be weight of a steel deck. Note that here we are not taking into account steel beam because the deck itself is just being supported on steel beams. And then construction loading 0.75, which is a normal construction loading for this kind of flow, kilonewton per meter square. Weight of wet concrete, we already determined. This is 3.25. Now, the difference between the loading on steel deck and steel beam is that here we don't have self-weight of steel beam. That's the only difference. So distributed load, we work out simply multiplying GK, and QK over here using equation 6.10B, we get 5 kN per meter square. Again, I multiplied with the floor area, which is 6 times 3. 6 is the length of the beam. 3 is the bay width, or it is the span of secondary beam. We get 90 kN here. This is the floor grid that we have used, and this is our secondary beam. Remember that the length of secondary beam is 6 meters, but the span of the slab is 6 divided by 2, which means that it is 3 meters. First, we need to work out applied moment. So 90 times 3, the span of sheeting is 3. So that's why we have used 3. We get this 33.75 kN meter. Now, remember here, I'm taking a lot of assumptions. The sheeting is normally continued over secondary beams. It means that it is a kind of continuous beam. 
But here, for simplicity, I'm taking the worst case scenario, which is the simply supported pending moment. So simply supported pending moment is the worst case scenario. The actual moment is going to be far less than WL over 8. So it will be in between WL over 8 and WL over 12, which is the fixed end moment. But let us consider the worst case scenario. In worst case scenario, it's going to be the simply supported moment in sagging situation. Then we go to the steel section properties. Here we will look for the ultimate moment, which is 11.27 kilonewton per meter for one millimeter thick profile. Then we will work out the ultimate moment capacity. So ultimate moment capacity will be equal to 11.27 times three, which is the length of the profile sheeting. So it gives us 33.81 kilonewton meter. Clearly here applied is less than ultimate bending moment, which means that the steel deck is fine. It can at least support wet concrete. It can at least support any labor which is working on top of steel deck and it can support any equipment as well. Remember that this check is not done in SCI P387 guide. I have included it myself so that you have the clear concept about composite construction. It needs to support the construction weight. It needs to support wet concrete. It needs to support equipment as well. Now you guessed it right. Our next check is the beam should be able to take loading at construction stage or at execution stage. Then we will come up with the trial section. Now we will use this applied moment at construction stage, which is 71.4. Moment is equal to section modulus times material strength. So from here, we can work out this required section modulus. So applied moment is 71.4, we times it the 10 raised 3 to, to convert everything into centimeter cube. And then we divide it by 275, which is the yield strength of steel and we get 259 centimeter cube which is our required section modulus now we will go to section table and then we will choose a section which has section modulus greater than 259 centimeter cube so this section 254108 and 22 it has plastic section modulus in major axis direction as 259 so our provided section modulus is 259 remember you can choose any section which has section modulus above 259 these are the properties which are obtained from section table and section E is 210 kilonewton per millimeter square and all other properties they are obtained from section table. First, we need to classify the section. Most of the sections in section table, they are either class one or class two sections. So we go to these buckling ratios. So for this section, CW over TW is 39, CF over TF is 5.93. Our limits for class one are nine epsilon. So nine epsilon is under root 235 over FY. Our FY is 275. Epsilon comes out to be 0.92. This value will be 8 point something. And our CF over TF 5.93 is less than 9 epsilon, which means flange is class 1. And our CW over TW, which is web buck local buckling ratio, it is less than 72 epsilon. So 72 times 0.92. 92 will give us 66 something and 39.5 is less than 66 so our section is class one in bending step four is to carry out composite stage design checks or normal stage design checks this is the situation where concrete has hardened and it should support dry concrete, beam and profile sheeting, services and finishes and any other occupancy load. These are the checks that I'm going to carry out step by step. And I will start with plastic bending check with full shear connection, then shear connector resistance and degree of shear connection, and then bending under partial shear connection, then longitudinal shear. So let us see how we can carry out these design checks. The first check in composite stage is to work out bending moment with full shear connection and there are three situations first is when plastic neutral axis lies within concrete slab the next is when it lies within top flange and this is the situation when compressive resistance provided by concrete is greater than tensile resistance of a steel 
And other two situations are when steel sections provide more axial resistance than concrete. NPLA is the axial tensile resistance of steel. NCF is the resistance of effective area of concrete flange acting compositely with steel section, which is equal to 0.85 FCD B effective into depth of concrete. Out of these three situations, the first one applies to secondary beams where the compression resistance available is always more than the tensile resistance provided by steel section, which means that plastic neutral axis lies in the slab. The second two situations, most of the time they are applicable to primary beam situations where steel sections offer more tensile resistance than compression flanges can match. But we will see in this example if first situation applies or not. If it doesn't, then we will move to the second and third one. When plastic neutral axis is within concrete slab, then we use this equation. Effective width need to be determined as well, where B0 is distance between shear studs. BEI is the effective width at mid span of concrete flange on each side of a steel section. It is LE over 8, where LE is the effective length. Here, because we have internal secondary beam, we don't have edge secondary beam. So we will have LE over 8 on both sides of the slab. If it was edge beam, then we will simply have one side. And then again, this is a effective bit that supports. Let us work out the compression resistance of concrete slab and tensile resistance of a steel section. If compression resistance is greater than tensile resistance, then we say that plastic neutral axis lies within the concrete slab. FCD is equal to alpha CC FCK over gamma C. Alpha CC is 0.85. From here, FCD is 14.2 Newton per millimeter square. Then we work out B effective. B effective is equal to B naught into summation of BEI. BEI is equal to LE over 8. LE is the span of the secondary beam. From here, we get 0.75 meters. Assuming a single line of shear studs, B0 is 0 because we are just using single stud. B effective will be 0 plus 2 times 0.75. Because this is internal secondary beam, it is not edge beam. If it was edge, then we will only have LE over 8 on one side. So that's why we multiplied with 2. So we get 1.5 meter. This should be less than 3 meter, which is beam spacing. We have B effective. We have FCD. Now we can work out compression resistance of concrete slab. So compression resistance of concrete slab is equal to FCD, B effective, and HC, which is height of concrete. FCD is 14.2. B effective is 1.5. We convert it into millimeters and 70 is height of concrete above steel deck, which is 70 millimeter. So we convert it into kilonewtons multiplying with 10 raised minus 3. We get 1491 kilonewton. Let us work out tensile resistance of steel section. So NPLA, wherever you see this A, it means that it is related only to steel section. NPLA is equal to material strength times area divided by gamma M0. Material strength is 275. Area of a steel section is obtained from section table because in section table it comes as centimeter square. So we convert it into millimeter square. And finally, we multiply everything with 10 raised minus 3 to convert it into kilonewtons. So we get 770. You can see clearly that compression resistance provided by concrete slab is more than the tensile resistance. What does it tell us? It tells us that the plastic neutral axis lies in concrete flange. When it lies in concrete flange, then we will use the first option. In first option, when plastic neutral axis, remember plastic neutral axis divides a section into two equal areas. On the other hand, elastic neutral axis or neutral axis, it passes through centroid of the section. NPLA for the first case is found by this formula, which I mentioned a bit earlier. HA is the height of the section. H is the height of the slab, which is 130. NPLA, we found out 770. NC is compression resistance of concrete slab, which is 1491. HC is height of concrete above 
profile deck. So from here, we get value of NPLRD as 184 kilonewton. Remember that this is plastic bending resistance at full shear connection. When shear studs are providing full shear connection, but we have to check if they are providing full shear connection or not. The bending moment at midsection, the applied one at composite straight is 114.8 kilonewton meter. So applied over capacity, it gives us 0.62. It means that the design bending resistance of composite slab is adequate, assuming full shear connection. But because this is a composite beam, full shear connection may not happen. And we have to check the shear stud capacity and we have to check the degree of shear connection. So our next step will be to work out shear connector resistance first and then degree of shear connection. And then we have to work out the bending capacity based on that degree of shear connection. First, we will determine shear connector resistance of solid slabs. And then we will multiply it with a reduction factor. If profile sheeting is oriented perpendicular, then there is a separate reduction factor. If it is parallel, then there is a separate reduction factor. So these are two formula for finding out the shear connector resistance. If shear stud fails, then the first formula will control. If concrete fails, then second formula will control. And these formula are for finding out alpha where these are different properties which are defined over here. The question is that how do we get shear connector resistance of solid slabs? Now, there are two ways. We can get shear stud resistance from full scale beam tests where we have a solid concrete slab acting compositely with the beam or we can use a replica of beam test which is termed as push test to work out shear stud resistance. And Eurocode 4 gives the arrangement for a standard push test using solid slabs. Most of the formula are developed on the fact that we carry out testing on push test with solid slab and then we apply a reduction factor. But in reality, we need to carry out push tests on profile sheetings as well. But there is no standard push test in Eurocode 4, which is quite surprising. And this is what we did as a part of my research that we carried out push tests on a horizontal arrangement. And then we found out the shear stud capacity and we recommended some of the guidelines to Eurocode 4. This is not directly related to the design provisions that we have, but I wanted to give you the background knowledge that you see how these design relations are developed. This is the reduction factor approach that we apply when we have profile sheeting, which is transfers to the supporting beam. And this is the factor that we will apply. If it was parallel, then we will use different formula. And then K max, that is the maximum reduction that you can use. Shear connector resistance. I showed you these formula a little earlier. Let us apply them now. So 0.9 alpha D square under root FCK ECM over gamma V. And this is when concrete fails. And this is when stud fails. In most of the situations, when we have profile sheeting slabs, stud does not fail. It is most of the time concrete that fails by forming shear cones around the decking profile. And gamma V is 1.25. Head C is height of shear stud divided by depth. We get 5.29. When head C over D is greater than and O, then we use alpha equal to 1. I got this from previous slide. So when head C over D is greater than 4, then we use alpha as 1. Putting all these values in the first formula, we get value of PRD as 73.7. The second one, FU, remember FU here is related to shear stud and FU should be less than 450. Area is the area of a stud. So pi D square over 4 diameter is 19. From here, here we get value of PRD as 81.7 kilonewton. Now we have to choose smaller of these two. So smaller of these two is 73.7 kilonewton. Then we have to apply reduction factor to this shear connector resistance because this was the shear connector resistance for solid slab. It is not for profile sheeting slab. Here we will use this formula as number of shear starts is one. So that's why we will replace one over here. B naught is the average width of the deck profile, we simply add up top and bottom width and divide it by two to get this 145. HP is height of profile, which is 60. HSC is the height of shear stud before welding. HP is the height of profile. We get 1.13. The reduction cannot be more than one. 
So we will simply use one, then one times PRD earlier was 73.7. We get shear stud resistance as 73.7 kilonewton. Once we have shear stud resistance, we are now in a position to find out degree of shear connection. And why do we need it? We need this degree of shear connection to be able to find out bending with partial shear connection. Number of shear studs and half span stud spacing is controlled by the deck profile. So if you have a look at deck profile earlier in the first slide, you will see that the ground to ground width was 300 millimeter. The center line to center line span three meters should be allowed to reduce for primary beam width or the column width. Because the the secondary beam is going to be supported either on a column or on primary beam. So that is why uh, we are su subtracting this 254 divided by 2 to allow for that factor. 3000 is half a span. Take away the beam depth divided by 2 or column depth divided by 2. The stud spacing, which is 300. Remember, stud spacing is controlled by the dimensions of the profile. So here we get 9 studs per half a span. In total span, we get 18 studs and that they need to be welded to the sheeting to the beam. Degree of shear connection provided by nine shear studs. Remember that we're using half a span. The reason is that because the shear force diagram is like this. So we will be using this part. Shear is zero in the middle. So RQ is the shear provided by studs. So nine shear studs will give us 663.3 kilonewton. So shear provided by studs divided by the axial capacity of the section, which was 770, we get 0 0.86. 0 0.86 or 86% is the degree of shear connection. Now we will use this degree of shear connection to work out bending at partial shear connection. We have to check minimum shear connection as well. So for LE less than 25 meter, degree of shear connection should be greater than or equal to 1 minus 355 over FY 0.75 minus 0.03 LE. Here, the only two factors are there. 275 is FY and LE is the length of the beam. We get 0.26. Minimum degree of shear connection should be found out using this formula or it should be greater than 0.4. Our degree of shear connection is 86%, which is greater than 0.4. So minimum is 0.4 and ours one is 86, so it is fine. Now we will work out plastic bending with partial shear connection. When we have degree of shear connection, NC over NCF, this is our degree of shear connection. Then we can work out the moment capacity. So MPLARD, wherever you see this MPLA, that is related to only steel section. And MPLRD is related to the moment capacity of the section with full shear connection. MPLARD simply we multiply WPL with FY, we get 71.2 kilonewton meter. MPLRD we determined a little earlier, which was 184. If we put all these values here, degree of shear connection was 86% or 0.86, we get 1682 kilonewton. Bending moment at mid span is 114 at composite stage. So 114 divided by 168, we get 0.68, which is less than one. It means that the design bending resistance of composite beam with partial shear connection is adequate. One very important thing to note here is that when we are designing a beam as restrained beam, its capacity is 71.2 kilonewton. When we are designing it as a composite beam, we are taking benefit of the composite slab, which is resting on top of the composite beam. And by utilizing that benefit, we are increasing the moment capacity by more than double. So you can see that here it is 71.2. Now under partial shear connection, it is 168. So it is more than double. That means that the depth of the steel sections are going to be reduced by almost half if we utilize the composite action. And if we design these beams as composite beams, and it will lead to greater economy. The only trouble is that the design process is a little bit tedious. And in a while, I will tell you, how you can design it very easily. And then we need to work out the longitudinal shear as well. The purpose of longitudinal shear is that the concrete flange should resist the longitudinal shear force 
transferred by shear connectors. And Juro Code 3 model considers a system of compressive struts, angled on plan, and ties as transverse reinforcement. To ties or transverse reinforcement, it limits the splitting of concrete struts limits the crushing of concrete but most of the time longitudinal shear is not big issue in secondary beams but when we are designing a primary beam it's going to be a major problem but i will check it in any way over here we will design transverse reinforcement that is resistance to splitting of concrete using this formula here hf is the depth of concrete above metal decking which is 70 millimeter sf is the spacing of transverse reinforcement f FYD is FY divided by gamma S, we get 435. For compression flanges, the angle should be between 26.5 and 45 degrees. The longitudinal stress is the stress transferred from the steel beam to concrete. This is determined from the minimum resistance of the steel, concrete, and shear connector. So in this example, the partial shear connection, the maximum force that can be transferred by the resistance of the shear connectors over half a span is given by 663.3 kN. The force must be transferred over each half a span. So there are two shear lanes on either side of the beam running parallel to it, which means that longitudinal shear stress will be equal to the shear by shear starts, which is 63 times 1000 divided by height of concrete times the half a span as a two half a span. So I multiplied with two. I get this shear stress as 1.58 Newton per millimeter square, which is the applied one, applied shear stress. For minimum area of transverse reinforcement, theta should be 26.5. So if we put these values in the equation, VED 1.58, HF is height of concrete divided by 435, pot angle is 26.5 we get 126 millimeter square per meter. We have to use a wire mesh that has area more than 126 meter square per meter. So in this case, we use A19P mesh. You can use A142 as well, but here we're using A193 mesh. Mesh looks like this on top of a steel beam. It has got diameter as seven millimeter and center to center spacing in both directions is 200 millimeter. Area is 193 millimeter square per meter. That's why its name is A193 mesh reinforcement. So this will provide sufficient ties. Let us now design strut. For a strut, VED should be less than or equal to V, F, C, D, sine theta and cos theta, where V is equal to 0.61 minus F, C, K over 250. FCK is 25. From here, we get V as 0.54. So if you put these values back in here, uh, we get value of this entire expression as 3.06 Newton per millimeter square. As VED, which is 1.58, is less than 3.06, it means that the crushing resistance of compression stress is fine as well. So the next thing which I will not cover, I will put a copy of slides, is vertical shear. Composite beam is a beam. Three things need to be checked bending, vertical shear, and serviceability. Bending, we checked. Vertical shear follows the same process as for restrained beams. And serviceability follows the same process, but it's, it's a little bit more complicated and there are more details in SCI guides. So this is the process. Again, we check this vertical shear and vertical shear is fine as well. The final check is serviceability check. Here, you have to check a couple of things. Details are in SCI guide P3. Five, nine. You have to check short term, long term, and dynamic modular ratios, serviceability combination of actions, composite bending and stiffness of the beam, total deflection and deflection due to imposed loads, stresses in the steel and concrete, and you have to check additionally natural frequency of the system as well. Now, the design process of composite beams is very complicated, but it is important that you understand the underlying principles of composite construction and composite beams. For detailed design, you can use this website directly and you can use any other structural design software as well. So if I click on VCI tool, it will lead me to this website. Let us input the parameters. Our beam is a secondary beam and the span of the beam is six Beam spacing is three, the concrete is C25, 30. Wet density in our case was 2,600 and dry density was 2,500. Mesh area is A193 and we use ComFloor 61 millimeter thick. 
and stud details are these. Other limitation is that we can't change the height of the stud here. We choose the section 254, 102, 22. Another limitation is that we cannot change this steel grade. Our steel grade was 275. Here it's 355. Construction loading 0.75. Imposed load in our case is 3.3. And services and finishes are 0.15. And ponding, you can even include ponding. Deflection limit, I will keep it as same. You can even check the fire resistance as well. So if I say yes, it will check the fire resistance. Let's go ahead and check the design. You can see that it has passed the execution check. Execution means that the construction stage. Normal means that composite stage. It is 0.76. Utilization ratio is 0.65 for normal stage. And shear connection is adequate. Here you can see all the details, stud details and execution stage output. The first execution stage output or construction stage output. Now you can see that deck weight is little bit more. In our case, it was 0.11 from the manufacturer guide, but here it is taken 0.34. And then we have combination of actions and MED, bending moment at mid span is not greater than ours. And then serviceability limit state check. So here it has passed the, so the bending capacity of the section is slightly higher. The reason is that we have S355 steel here. In our case, it was S275. Then serviceability is fine as well. Normal stage output or composite stage output. We have all the loading here. And shear stud resistance here is smaller than ours because the height of shear stud here is, is 95 instead of 100. So that's the reason it's slightly different. And then tensile strength of steel section is higher as well because we have S275 steel. That's the reason the degree of shear connection is 57.2. In our case, it was 86. M the MAD is 112, which is not very far off from our MAD. MRD is similar to ours. Here it's 172. And it passes all the checks only failed this total deflection check slightly and for this one i will go back and i will change the section slightly to see that if it will pass the check or not so let me change the section from here to 254 254 102 let me check the next higher one the weight is going to be slightly higher 25 kg per meter so let us see if by using this it passes the serviceability as well so let's check the design now it has passed all the checks in summary you can see it has passed everything so in that way you can use this website to work out the capacity of the composite beam and you can actually design the composite beam